are the biggest challenges going to be facing Imran Khan now that he's taken power? Well, the biggest challenge is the economy. Uh, obviously, the IMF, uh, there's an IMF bailout package that he needs. He says, his team says that they need. But, but what he also needs to do is look at uh, reforming the domestic structure of Pakistan. Uh, a big problem for previous governments has been broadening the tax base. A lot of wealthy Pakistanis don't pay enough tax, uh, and they s s sort of siphon off a lot of funds that they should invest in the country. And that means that a lot of poorer Pakistanis don't get the, the sort of uh, social sector care that they can. That's something he wants to change. So whether he'll be able to bring, uh, uh, balance uh, the, the country's uh, uh, economy, so to speak, between the poorer and the richer sectors, that's going to be his biggest challenge. Uh, what is also going to be a, 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 a problem for him uh, is going to be how to bring back all the money that he says has been stolen and taken out of the country. Uh, he, he has been talking about accountability, about ending corruption, but he's also spoken about bringing about $100 billion that he says has been stolen from Pakistan and taken and take into accounts abroad. So how he's going to do that, that's you know a, a really big challenge, how he's going to manage to bring all that money back into Pakistan. Oh, that's a lot of money. What um, changes has he managed to bring so far, though? Because he's already sort of shuffling or shaking things up, bringing in people who perhaps are not traditionally politicians. He has. I mean, the, uh, uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly, that's a very key position in Pakistani politics. That's gone to an ex-volleyball player, a national volleyball player, and someone who is not a traditional politician. Uh, uh, Asad Kesar is uh, from the uh, in, in KPK, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. Uh, and also, he's brought in more women uh, 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 parliamentarians. He's managed to, uh, one of his uh, uh, most uh, senior, uh, uh, sorry, most junior uh, uh, women politicians managed to a senior conservative leader near the Waziristan region, which was a Taliban uh, haven for years. So that's a big victory. He's also given the, uh, the he's also chosen uh, the the, uh, the head of the Punjab province as the chief minister of Punjab province as someone who's from a very conservative region of the uh, of that uh, uh, province. And and uh, he said he's chosen that person. His name is Bozdar because he doesn't have electricity in his own home. So he, these are the kind of social changes that he's uh, sort of, uh, you know, breaking away from the traditional uh, political milieu that he's doing. And he will say he wants to bring in more uh, middle class people, more educated people into the leadership structure of Pakistan. So far, he has accomplished that. But we'll have to wait and see how it all develops in the next few months. Even with the swearing in of a new prime minister, uh, there are divisions which remain among uh, the people of Pakistan aren't there. I mean, there has obviously been these uh, allegations of corruption levelled against uh, Imran Khan and his party in terms of the election themselves, but there's still divisions among people, isn't there, in terms of the economy and, and in terms of the belief of whether Imran Khan can really make a change. There is definitely, I mean, the, there are allegations of rigging that were uh, uh, leveled against Imran Khan. But rigging has always been a part of Pakistan's political culture, and it, it probably has happened this time. But maybe not uh, to the scale that a lot of the opposition is suggesting. Uh, but definitely, uh, the, the problem between Pakistan and it, Pakistan at the moment is a very divided country. I was there recently. I was covering the elections. And I found that there was no middle ground anymore. There were either, either people were with Imran Khan or they were against him. And th th there was no space for discourse. There was no space about how reconciliation could happen between those two camps. And increasingly, the people who are against him are still very powerful people, therefore, from the more wealthier uh, classes of society and the people with him are the urban middle class and the, and the poorer sections. And his job will be to bring them together so that Pakistan can go forward. Whether he'll be able to do that, to tackle Pakistan's major uh, uh, electricity and power crisis, and also tackle the social crisis, like poverty, which he has spoken about, and to, to really bring the, 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 the bottom half of society into uh, a, 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 a large social net, which is lacking at the moment, that will be, uh, those are going to be his missing, uh, uh, biggest challenges. That is what he spoke about in the beginning, that he wants to unite Pakistan. That really is his biggest challenge.